What have we seen since that first fish? <clears throat> 133, 362, 127, Good on that one. I had like the feeling. Oh shit. What did ISDL say? Um, day 700 before Griffin is too much. <clears throat> um, yeah, that'd be. I, there's a lot of games like that. I don't know any off the top of my head, but there are a lot of like real time strategy games where like. Oh shit, what is happening? Why is... No, stop that. Chot. What, what, what is happening? There we go. Weird. Yeah, that's such a grind. I'm honestly, like, afraid, because, like, that kind of commitment will take the record from me. Like, I'm kind of hoping you finish your fishing contest stuff before you catch a 188. Like, I, I hate to say that out loud, but, like, your, your commitment scares me. Yeah, but I mean, you've said it yourself, it's not specifically about the 12 hour sessions of fishing, it's just about getting out there. And if they do 11 rounds of the fishing contest, that's a lot of big ass Kaji to catch. Because they're not duplicating fish. So, there's a chance that they can see the 200. Like, they almost took, they almost took the Hamahama Hama record from me already. They were 20 points, I think. They were 10 centimeters, or no, they were 11 centimeters Yeah, 11 centimeters and 20 FP off of taking the Hama Hama record. They almost had it. If they were on retro achievements, they would have taken it. Don Doken got lucky that they're not on Retro. They would have taken it from them, because I think their record's 116. I still haven't seen a Hama Hama longer than 128, which kind of bums me out. I have two, I had two 128s. Two 128s and a Although, how long ago was it that I didn't even know Hama Hama got, like, that big? <clears throat> Scroll on over. Down, 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 down. 
When was I bait rod? When was I still a bait rod fisher? Because I was like, eh, I ain't using no lure rod. Three months ago. Wow. 149, 238 was my best Kaji. My best Hamahama was 98, 169. My best Bon was 91, 79. <laughs> Fucking the triple threat. Coming after your mental health. What death is probably the worst for me in Hunter Hunter? Oh, yeah, obviously not. There's definitely an answer for that. Um, there's an easy answer for that. That's why I'm thinking. Kind of going through the show back in my head. Oh, it's probably Poo Hat. From Greed Island. When they throw his head in the bag back at everybody on Greed Island. I always wondered what his nan ability was, because he was good enough to get recruited. He was one of the ones selected, but Genthru kills him so quickly that it's just like, oh, my guy. Yeah, and then they fucking deliver his head in a fucking grocery bag. Oh, the disrespect. Oh no, there's a death that's after the anime that's in the manga only. I think it's specifically in the latest, yeah, I think it's in the latest chapter. It's so fucked up that it's just like, oh, easily number one. Easily number one, no competition. The current chapters are, like, straight up a horror novel. It's not normal Hunter Hunter. It is definitely no longer Gone Story. He's literally, he's not a part, he's not even a part of the story anymore. That is a spoiler. Not really. It's not even a spoiler, but it is kind of a spoiler. He I mean, he, he literally leaves the end of the story. Well, you won't find out unless you read. I don't even know when it picks up, honestly. But no, that is a bit of a spoiler. Is uh, I mean, like you know, Gon's story is over because that's how the anime ends. But that's exactly where the manga picks up is Jean separating from Gon. It's kind of crazy. It literally is Jean splitting from Gon, and then you follow him for a bit. So it's, I mean, that is a spoiler, obviously. But yeah, like Gon's out of the story.
Oh, I might have to reread the series now. There's some chapters of the manga where, like, Kilawa and Gon straight up look like they're out of, like, Dark Cloud or Kingdom Hearts. Like, their shoes to, like, hands and leg ratio look hilarious. Like, they have these little pencil legs and their fucking shoes are as big as their fucking calves. Or as long as their calves. It's hilarious. <clears throat> Although, I'll say one thing that sucks about the manga is, like... You can actually, like, see the health of the artist. Um, whenever his back starts to hurt, the art goes downhill dramatically. And then all of a sudden, you'll get, like, two walls of text. And then maybe a full page of art. And then a bunch of text again. And it's just like, oh shit, like, he was fucked up for a couple weeks. And then, like, all of a sudden, like, you'll get a whole new book, and then the art's insane. And it's just like, oh, man, why has he always got to do the art really fucking well when he comes back? And then, like, the art's really good, really good, really... Kind of all right, kind of all right, really bad. And then wall of text, wall of text, bad art, end of book. And it's just like, ugh, this is kind of hard to read, but... He's definitely leaned more into his art being worse in general, but like a definite style in the later books. However, I'll take that any day. His story writing is just so good. I don't think the narrator will be as prevalent as it would be in the Chimera Ant arc, but like the narrator will definitely be making a return for the succession arc. Oh, it's so good. It makes me so mad that you won't read it. I want to talk about it with somebody. It's so good. It's literally peak Hunter Hunter. But it's not, because it'll never be finished. So it can't be peak. You know what? I'll spoil it just so you do read it. Hisoka's got an entire book. Now if it never gets animated, you'll have that in the back of your head. He gets and has an entire volume about him. Talk about a great read. Darker than anything, pretty much, in the normal Hunter Hunter. I mean, the Chimera Ant arc's pretty dark. But no Gone, no Kilawa, no Leorio, no Kurabika. None of the main cast anymore. Just the adults. Soka's adventure.
Shoot, now I have to know. How many volumes are there that take place after the... There are five full volumes that take place after the show. And if you ask me, they're the five best volumes in the entire story. <clears throat> They're actually the ones I think I've read the most. Although it's been a while since I've read them. And they have the most going on, but bar, bar none. The odds of him ever finishing it are like so far, it's just impossible. I don't even know how to say it. Between trying to think of, like, a good way to wrap up all the shit he started all of a sudden and, like, just actually illustrate and write it, it's just, nope. But that's fine, because what he has written and finished is good enough. Oh, it's so good. And it leaves so much to the imagination. I'm kind of bummed. Do I? Mm. Oh shit, was I supposed to wait there or was I shaking? I have no idea. Um. Interesting. Interesting. So we've seen some good fish today Doing resets and we've seen some good fish by sticking with whatever we got going on here um, But do I save at the end of all this I don't really need to But I mean that does advance my RNG more it bums me out when I save at the end of stuff like this because I should have been feeding my fish at any point if I'm not going to reset. But if I'm just going to try to catch a 190, I don't really need to feed my one Kaji. There's really just no point in that. But like, that's honestly like borderline the end of my hopeful thinking. Like, it really means a lot that you're all here cheering me on, but like, I'm telling y'all, March 22nd when Dragon's Dogma 2 comes out, it's gonna probably be the breaking point for me. Like, I hope one of y'all catch it. Because like, I've got, what is that? 24 days left of sanity probably, and then like, there's just no way. I've already hit a couple breaking points. You've seen it.
but like Dragon's Dogma 2 would have to be a total disappointment. What's funny is if Dragon's Dogma 2 turns out to be a total disappointment, I will probably be back like in a new playthrough of this game trying to get to chapter 4 um, as soon as possible in no time. Just to get my mind off of how bad that game is. And again, I'll know within like an hour and I'll have that motherfucker refunded on Steam. Actually, it probably won't even be an hour. I'll probably know within the first 20 minutes if they fucked with the mechanics too much or not. That's just how I am. Like 10 minutes of just literally running around the starting town or the tutorial is enough for me. Like if I don't like the way my character rolls or slides or jumps or interacts with the environment, eh, fuck no, no way. And I know I'm not going to just get over it. If I'm not feeling immersed immediately, it's just not going to happen. 118, do we have anything that low? We have a Hama Hama. Okay, day's moved up. I mean, one day I'll probably come back to Dark Cloud 2 and, like, get back to all of this, but, like... I mean, it's... it's... getting hard. I mean, like, I'm, I'm either gonna have to, like, figure out another fish to devolve into madness with, or... I'm gonna need somebody else to inspire me, because, like, I'm literally battling myself. And I swear to God, if you post a 188, you're getting banned. No, I'm kidding. I'd be so happy for somebody to catch something like that, but it would still bum me out because it's just like... I want to see the 190s. I want to see the 200s. And then, like, I want to see a 700. I want to see if, like, the 700 to 750 has its own FP. Or not FP. If it has its own model sizes. Um, <clears throat> is 190 and 200 different model sizes in the aquarium? Like, I've got questions, but, like... Ooh! 100, 350! So close! So close to... Ah, I still haven't hit that high yet. So that sucks, like, is that... See, like, in my mind, that's a missed opportunity. Like, was that a good roll? <clears throat> but, like, a bad length? Like, I just, ugh. I wish I could put that fish in the aquarium and be like, oh, yeah, <clears throat> check it out. It's a 106.8. It was almost perfect. So, yeah, we know 106.9 would have been a 100 in 375, because that's max. Like, in my mind, that that would make sense. Is that, like, the decimal indicates, like, how high on the FP you rolled. But, like, we know that's not true. Ugh, I just wish we could figure it out, like, tomorrow. Like, oh, hey, did you see? Somebody posted, somebody posted. You just have to keep fishing until you see three Kaji in a row that are increasing in size. And then you have to wait till 5 p.m. And then when 5 p.m. hits, you cast. And that way, the fourth fish you catch is always larger than the last three. And it's like, oh, shit. That's kind of cool. But, like, fuck, man. I don't, I don't know. 
There's literally somebody who literally just waits around till 5 and 6 p.m. to catch their Kaji, and like, that doesn't work. What I do hasn't really worked. I mean, it kind of worked at the start. Um, Pokemon Fan 4000 is technically sitting in third place. See, is there a way to, like, redo your research, but, like, and not see averages? I'm sure you talked about that back then, like, with Kevin and Depth, and I just couldn't understand it, but, like, is, was, is there no way to do that stuff and not see averages, but instead see extremes, like, ranges? I guess we don't even really need to anymore. We just, we, I mean, we know it's 200. Is it a task that's like, a, is it a task that's a computer that does things for you? I wish we could set up a task to do it. Like teach a task how to gain, recognize a perfect fish. Oh my god, can you imagine watching a TAS and it's just like sitting there like zipping around the screen like waiting for the perfect fucking moment to cast? And it's just like, well, we'll never pull that off. <laughs> I guess it wouldn't be zipping around the screen, it'd be sitting there patiently because it's perfect. Unless that's the RNG manipulation. Excuse me. That was gross. What the fuck is that? I've never seen that on my computer before. Microsoft Teams. What the fuck is Microsoft Teams? <clears throat> oh damn, I'm down to one viewer. I scared everybody away. Oh. It's for the best. Can't steal their information. I don't think I have <clears throat> the authority for that. I'm just kidding though. We lost two people to work. It can't be helped. When the job comes a calling, you best be answering. Except when your boss tells you that you don't have anything to do that day so you can take the day off and then while you're like sitting there enjoying your day off at the fucking local Walmart because you're getting your oil changed he calls you and goes hey I need you here in 30 minutes <clears throat> you probably shouldn't have answered the call to work probably should have just gotten your oil changed I remember being so embarrassed that day <clears throat> and then like realizing like fuck him like fuck him like blah 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 how dare he get tell me I don't have to work and then try to get mad at me that I can't make it there in time
Oh, I have no idea how exactly I got there. Um... Oh, we lost... I was talking about <clears throat> how nobody's here earlier, and then I said we lost two people to work, and I said when the call to work calls, you answer. Um, but it's unless your boss is an asshole. That's how I got here. It has nothing to do with the 170. That was confusing. That's why. I have no authority over that. I would I would be catching nothing but 170s if I could. I'm still convinced that's the secret to all of this. Is like that little jump right there, that little bar that I'm seeing. I need to figure out how to summon the big fish. Because, like, as we know, you can get fucked with RNG. <clears throat> it can go either way. You can get a long fish that's light. You can get, a, like, a short fish that's heavy. You can get both. You can get not. Like, whatever. Um, we need to find a way to either manipulate, try to replicate, or just understand how or what causes those big jump fish um because i mean like honestly i'd have to go back and look but like i've probably experienced 50 of them by now no that's an exaggeration maybe 25 and like it's such a lottery like we have to figure out how to specifically spawn that fish. Otherwise, nobody's ever going to get it because they're so rare that, like, again, you just got to be thankful that you got a 55 440 or that you got the fucking 145 600 or you got the fucking somewhere in between because, like, Getting 180 and above and getting 600 and above is so absurdly rare. It's just insane. I've seen two 170s and a shitload of 500s. Um, honestly, I would say... You know, that kind of... No, it doesn't make sense. I was gonna say 160s and 600s are about as rare, but like, no, I'd say 170s. No, that's, I, I really don't know. I Honestly, I'd say the 180s and the 600s are about as rare, but like, I mean, yeah, that would, that would mean 700s as rare as 190s, because it is unseen. Ugh, it would crush me though. I mean like I would be riding high for the rest of the day But the next day it would crush me if I saw like a 170 700. It would crush me Maybe after a few weeks I'd rebound and realize that my 180s even rarer, but like it would just crush me Like, I am dead set on breaking that 187, even if it's by a centimeter at this point. I am really kind of bummed. That, that 614 was my, like, my golden ticket it should have been a solid 190 i think or at least like 189 but like being a 179 was such a fucking taunt and at the start of a session it was the third fish i'd caught of that session like 15 minutes in i was so stoked I thought that was the day.
That breaks my heart. That actually, that like actually breaks my heart. I feel like that's not even mathematically possible. That means the that means the ra that explains a lot. If the ranges all of a sudden become instead of 100, 200 point values, that explains so much. That means they're twice as rare than we ever thought. Because my 187 is a 522. That would make so much sense. Or yeah, relative percentile that the closer you get to it, the rarer it gets by like exponential values. I don't know if we'll ever get our answers without just like breaking down the code completely. But like, see, like it, it is value wise, but like rarity wise, I almost wonder if it's just an exponential thing. Cause like, that's what they did in Dragon Quest VIII where it's just like, hey, the first rare item is a one in two, and then the second is a one in six, and then one in 12, and then one in 64. And it's like, in order to get the one in 64, you have to roll the one in two, one in four, one in, and like it ends up being a one in 54,000. And it's like, why is stuff this rare? It's like, well, it's not that rare. You only have to roll a one and two and one. And it's like, no, stop. Yeah, I mean, like, and I mean, that's kind of like what I want to do is catch another 180 so that like if I did the math of like, Hey, this is how many I caught, and this is how many of this size, and of all the fish that made the bar go up to the halfway, here's how many were 150, how many were 160, 170, 180. And if I only have one 180, I feel like that's just not good results. Two is not good results either, but I feel like it's better than one. I have two uh, 170s now, I have a bunch of 160s, um, I have a bunch of 150s stacking up. I mean, like, if I got a 190 at this point, I'd feel confident that it's just as rare as the 180s. <clears throat> but, like, I need at least one of them. <coughs> Another 180, a 190, or the fucking 200. I'm glad I've got a 600. I'll throw it on to the, the ranges. It'll be an outlier. It'll be an extreme range, but... It exists. It'd be cool to have one in the 700s, but I'm not fucking hopeful for that. Um, it almost seems comical when we thought my one Hama Hama was 98 percentile. Like, that that's almost like... <laughs> that was three months ago. Like, that, it almost makes me feel crazy. Like, I am doing weird ass research of fish in a niche game of a mini game of a of a mini game in a niche game I mean people care I fucking care That's why I'm doing it I want answers I want results well I have results I have insane results see and that's the other part of me is like, I feel like I want somebody else to do it because I am almost asking for too much, but like then I'm like, I don't want, I fucking want the fish. I don't want somebody else to do it. I want it. But it's just like, Jesus Christ, like I have a 187. Like, what, am I not happy? Like, I am happy with it, obviously. But it's just like, am I asking for too much? I hold 5 out of 20. I mean, like, that's a decent amount. 
I am very proud of the five that I hold. Hamahama and Kaji, I'm very proud of. I lost fucking Baron by a centimeter, so I could I could take that back. <clears throat> I know for a fact Don Doken only took Baron by a centimeter and didn't push it any further. I'll have to check on that, but I don't think so. Oh yeah, I did totally forget about Tartan. You are right about Tartan. I guess I do have Tartan. I don't think anybody's taking Tartan from me. That one's fucked. I literally, and I know it's narcissistic as hell, but like, I love listening to my reaction to the Tartan one. So I'm literally just like, this is not a Tartan. It's not even the size, it's the fact that I don't think anybody, like, wants the tartan. I don't think anybody is ever going to target the tartan. And I wasn't even targeting the tartan myself. So, like, if anybody's going to take it, it is going to be just an absolute, just blind luck. Whoa, what the fuck? Because I can't imagine anybody just being like, alright, I'm going to go up to Palm Brings Lake with a 999 stack of Evie, and I'm going to catch the Tartan record. Like, no, it's just going to be a byproduct of another grind. And, like, again, we, for all we know, Pokemon fan might have caught the record Tartan and just never showed us. It's hard to believe that they didn't catch any record Hama Hama. Well, on the flip side, it is. It is easy to believe that. Because they threw fish at a certain point. So, like, they wouldn't even have bothered with a record-sized Hama Hama. They would have tossed it, wouldn't they? That's so weird. Wow. I never even thought about that. They might never have actually seen a big Hama Hama. I respect it. I, like, when I was chucking fish that one time, I was realizing how much time I actually wasted by reeling these bad boys in. Like, I'd already be on to the next fish. But, like, I just, I actually enjoy the little mini game. Like, it's just, it's why I'm here. I actually, I like the whole facade. I like the pretend fly fishing. I like the, okay, cast it out. Am I in a good spot? Wait, plunk. Buttons are on screen. Look over at my timer. We're gonna wait. And it's on, like I love it. I love the whole fucking song and dance. And I feel like if you start chucking fish, it's just, it's no longer about the mini game. You're, you're here for big fish. And then it's just like, well, what the fuck do you give a shit about the big fish for? Like, you can already win the race. You don't need these fish for the fishing contest. I mean, I guess if you were just trying to get the fishing contest fish and you wanted to get out of here, that's probably your best method. But like, if you're going for world records, I don't see the point in chucking the fish and stuff. Like, that's literally just gambling at that point. Like, there's a million games. Like, I literally, I could go gamble in Sudokin. But, like, that's not, I want, I want to fish. I want to see the battle play out. I want to watch the bar fucking teeter. I want to see how often I can tap X. Um, and what's crazy is I'm not honestly sure if I'm within range of my own curiosity or if this truly is in the land of fucked up or not. Because I've said multiple times that I'm going to go until Dragon's Dogma 2 comes out. So, like, I don't know if in my own mind I thought this would take that long. Or if, like, I just, you know, 
casually was just like, yeah, yeah, I don't get bored and play other games. But, like, I don't know. I mean, like, there really is a good chance that, like, I won't ever get a bigger fish. But, like, damn if I won't try. See, I like video games that look like that and stuff, and I want to check them out for the fishing. But my whole problem is as soon as I think about it, all of the fun is sucked out from FOMO because there is no, like, bigger versions of each fish. Like, the fishing looks cool and it looks like fun, but it's just like, once you catch each fish, you're done. Same thing with Far Cry, I think it's 6. Far Cry 6 looks like has some of the best fishing animations and stuff that I've seen in a game. But, like, all of the fish have the same model. And, like, I think that's one of the best parts about this. And again, I think that all comes down to a game's replayability. Because, like, I don't know. It's just, like, just a little variance like that makes the game so replayable. But maybe I'm wrong about The Legend of Zelda, but I'm pretty sure in The Legend of Zelda games there are no differing fish sizes. Which, not that they're bad mini games. It's just, once you catch one of every fish, it's kind of like, meh. But, like, and I know you'll agree, that's one of the greatest parts about this game. Is it's just like, oh, you caught a tartan, how big was it? And it's like, oh, shit, like, what do you mean? Like, okay, you, you catch record fish? Yeah, of course. It's so, it's so addicting. Um, I mean, for God's sakes, you saw me in that other stream the other day. I convinced that French streamer to go after Kaji. Uh, Wolfies? 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 That's such a fun stream. Kind of, I've never really liked that analogy, because, like, the chips are indeed time, you are correct, but, like, everybody's gonna do something in their spare moments of free time to find enjoyment. And, like... I would only say that this truly is gambling, because, like, I don't find enjoyment in other games fishing right now, because I'm so caught up in trying to catch the 200. But, like, if I wasn't caught up in the 200, I could just drop this and play a different game and enjoy it. But, like, I will admit, yes, the chips are time. But if you're not me, it's pretty much not true because you're gonna, you're gonna be doing something to have fun. And, like, that's the case for any game that has RNG in it, that you're gambling. No, absolutely, like, but I'm just saying for anybody but me, that's not true. Because, like, then you could make the argument that simply playing an RPG game is gambling your time away because every move is random and, like, you could get burned in this action or the boss might drop the best sword in the game or it might not drop. But, like, yes, for me, the chips are time, but I would say for everybody else, it's not. Um... Because then, I mean, like, that's just devolving the whole conversation. Because, like, you do have to catch a fish in this game once. You never have to catch fish again. So, absolutely, what I'm doing is putting my chips on the table and time is the chip. But, like, what else would I be doing? I'd just play through this game and then play through another game and then play through another game. But yes, no, absolutely for me, I agree with you. But for everybody else, I don't think that statement's as true. Like, even for you and Don Doke. Um, oh, damn it. Lost my spot. Well, we hadn't caught anything record anyways. Um, like, even for you and Don Doke, I wouldn't even say you two have spent enough time for it to count as, like, gambling. I'd say it's just, like fun time still but like i would definitely say for myself yes i i am gambling time away but like i'd be just doing another challenge i have a billion other challenges and other games to be doing and just this one is the one that my brain is obsessed with right now and i will yeah admit it is full-on fomo gambling at this point but 
I can guarantee my brain chemicals will fucking shift into hyperdrive for Dragon Sogma 2. And it just, I will forget about this. It's unhealthy to even think that way, but... I never thought that game was gonna exist. I'm so hyped. I shouldn't be, but like... They seem quite confident in it as well, because they're sharing a lot of gameplay footage. And like, that, that makes me happy. The main things that I need from Dragon's Dogma 2 is the combat to be as addictive as Dragon's Dogma 1. Single-handedly the best combat in any game I think I've ever played. And then I need the items to be the same. So like, if I go up to a chest and open it and I get a healing potion, I need to know that 50% of the time it's going to be a healing potion, 10% of the time I'm gonna get like a cloth shirt, 5% of the time I'm gonna get a nice shirt, and then like, I don't know, there's a rare percent for a couple rings, because that's how the original game was, and I loved it. Not bad, not bad, we've seen a lot of that today. I love it, that's not a bad fish. I, I know, I do not enjoy games like that. There is something about that style of combat that just completely puts me off. It's not even necessarily the Sekiro style, I should say. It's the, um... I really don't know how to describe it. It's like, it's weird. It's like a whole genre in my brain. But like, God of War uh, 2018... Assassin's Creed games, Sekiro, and like a bunch of other popular games that like I just cannot play because there's something about how like I don't know. There's just something about the combat that like does not feel fun to me even remotely. I barely like Bloodborne. There's something about Bloodborne that just does not feel right to me. But, like, Sekiro already is lacking in RPG elements for me. Like, it's cool and all. But, like, what if I want to do a two-handed greatsword playthrough? What if I want to do a shield and sword? What if I want to do a bow? It, does, it doesn't have that. Yeah, no, that's... I mean, yeah, that's true. It's just, like... I don't know. There's just something about those games where, like, all the combat is handled the exact same way because, like, it, the main character uses a certain weapon. And, like, that's not a problem with the game. It's just I don't enjoy that. I enjoy, like, the dark... And maybe it's because of Dark Cloud 2. Um, but, like, I enjoy that, like, you can play through a game with multiple weapons and, like, get 20 playthroughs in and never have used the same weapon. But, like, Sekiro, God of War, Assassin's Creed, those games, like, that's, that's not how it works. Like, there is a set list of weapons. Can you use them in different orders? Yeah. But, like, no. Yeah, and I love, El I love Elden Ring, except for all the repeating bosses. I genuinely love Elden Ring, but, like, there's just too many bosses. Like, it's not even worth my fucking time. I don't think anybody actually, like, enjoys all the bosses in Elden Ring. And see, the, 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 you say that, but, like, honestly, I thought Elden Ring was so fucking insanely difficult when I first played it. Because I didn't use Google. Um, I stayed away from the internet, so I didn't realize that people had figured out Vigor broke the game. I thought it was just a generic, like, Dark Souls game and that leveling up your health wasn't gonna do anything. Um, so I made it all the way to Godfrey with eight vigor, wearing the twin sage crown and the fucking America seal. I died in one hit to anything. I had like f less than 400 health or some shit. It was fucking wild. It's how I play the game now, because, like, once I realized that if you had 40 Vigor, the game was in easy mode, it ruined it. It completely ruined the game for me. And it was just like, alright, I gotta play fucking naked with no armor now.
But, like, that's what I liked about Elden Ring, was, like... I mean, yes, there's 20,000 ways to break it, but there's also 20,000 ways to play through it. It's like, okay, I'm gonna hop on Torrent, and what, what weapon do I want to play through with this time? I've got a hundred weapons to look through, and then 40 of them are all locked behind one boss at least. And it's just like, that's just, that's, in, that's 200 playthroughs. Like, it's so good. Like, that's, that's what I like about a game. And like, again, Dark Cloud has that in spades and aces, just fucking everything. Fucking Royal Flush. Like, yeah, you have to use the Island King or like the ultimate weapons and stuff like that. But like the path you take, pretty free. Pretty free. And I just, ugh. That's what I love about a game. Yeah. I mean, Elden Ring's a bad example because there's a, I, I would say what, 40% of the game is on, you can ride Torrent? I barely roll in Elden Ring, I'd say. I mostly, if I can ride Torrent, I ride. Um. And then I would say more often than not in Elden Ring. And again, I, I, I agree with you for the Souls games, but not Elden Ring. Um, I would say more often than not in Elden Ring, I run and jump to get away from bosses. I feel like running and jumping is a much better way to get away from a boss in a, like a tricky situation than rolling. Two rolls does not get you that far away, but if you, if you quickly sprint and jump, you're good. I mean, again, I'm not going to deny that Sekiro has good combat, but, like, again, can you do, a bo like, a bow-only playthrough? Can you do a two-handed sword playthrough? Can you do a dagger playthrough? Can you do a magic playthrough? Like, no, it just it doesn't have that. It's just not my kind of game. If they made a game like Sekiro, but Elden Ring-esque, I'm sure I would like it. But just, like, I, I can't play games like that. They're just not fun to me. But, I mean, again, that's, like, an opinion. It's just not for me. I mean, in my opinion, they missed out on one of the best experiences. Why the hell not add more weapons to the game? He very easily could have had a halberd weapon, or a whip, or a scythe, or daggers, or what are they called, size? Or he could have had fucking... I mean, yeah, absolutely, again, but that's exactly my point. At any point does he get, like, the ability to swap the sword for a bow, or magic, for a staff, or anything like that. It's just, I'm not, I mean, I could enjoy it for a single playthrough, but, like, that's it. And, like, I, I don't enjoy playing games like that anymore. Because I still have to do all of my bullshit, like, research to find out how to get as overpowered as possible so I can one-shot all of the bosses, and just it's just not worth my time anymore. Like, I'm sure I'd enjoy the one playthrough. It's like Rogue Galaxy. Like, I'm probably not going to do more than two playthroughs of Rogue Galaxy, but that game's got a shitload of replayability. I just... I just don't have it anymore. I will watch a Distortion 2 playthrough and see if he has an example of any of that. 
If Distortion 2 does not have a good example of any of that, you're not selling me. That is the only person that could sell me. See, you're saying all this stuff, but like, I can almost guarantee that the combat looks the exact fucking same with it. It's just like, they're, they're, I can almost guarantee it. It's just there's a fucking look to the combat and a feel to it. I've played God of War and I've played Assassin's Creed and there's just a look to the lock-on and using a certain type of fucking mechanic. I can check it out though. Distortion 2 is usually- oh shit. Okay, yeah, but you're saying that, like, again, that I can't do a playthrough where I go and pick up the meteorite staff and I do all magic. And then there's a playthrough where I go and I pick up the crossbow from a certain guy and I do explosive bolts. And then a playthrough where I do a ninja build. And then a playthrough where I do blood magic. And then a playthrough where I do pyromancy. And then a playthrough where I do a holy cleric. And then a playthrough where I play some guy with raptor claws. And then I do a playthrough where I don't ride a horse. And then there's a playthrough where I only throw explosive pots at people. I mean, like, it's just, it's not even comparable. The freedom you have in a game like Dark Souls and Elden Ring versus Sekiro is just, it's not even comparable. You are one character in Sekiro. You've completely ignored what I said, though. Like... You, yes, you have to use a certain weapon at the end game, but how you get there is totally different. I mean, like, yes, again, I'm, I'm a weirdo particularly, but, like, if I wanted to, I could have used the Jurak gun, but I like collecting it. You do, too. I don't even want to hear it. Um, but, like, the way you get to your final weapons can be different in, like, a ton of different ways. I don't even want to hear it. You just learned about Muramasa last year, I think. You had never seen that weapon, like, in detail. There are so many weapons in this game. There's different attack styles. There's different swing speeds. I mean, see, now you're just being reductive for the sake of argument. Like, no, this game has a lot of replayability in that sake. That's even more replayability. You can build up the weapons or do a new game plus with name change tickets. That's so different. That's not even a good argument. That's literally replayability to a T.
Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much done. Um, hmm, I guess I'll finish out this day and then I'm calling it. I don't feel like sitting here and being told what games I do and don't enjoy. While I'm sitting here trying to fucking catch a fish that I don't need to catch. Yeah, you know what? I don't even need to catch it. 